When we're talking about spraying and stuff, where um, you're talking about spraying the entire field, um, what uh, what about spot spraying? I know we talk about that sometimes. Um, is it uh, where, where's the technology at in that right now? Yeah, that's actually what we get inquired most about. Guys walk by mm. like say, hey, these spot sprayers are getting serious these days, you know, and that's what the drone industry used to be. We're tapping into very efficient row crop spraying now. So a drone three years ago was a spot sprayer or was a specialty acre um, lake golf course type sprayer. Now we're getting the row crop. So they spot drone sprayers are known as spot sprayers. That capability is still there, is still where it's at. That fully customizable fly it yourself, spray wherever you want is there. We're getting serious on the row crop acres per hour side now. So what do you think has made it uh, be more serious on the row crop acres? Has it been capacity that they're able to haul? Has it been um, battery life? What What do you think has uh, has kind of pushed us in this direction? And how long do you think we've been in this in this ability to start uh, actually spraying an entire field? Yeah. The, what's really getting us there is is obviously the acres per hour efficiency. Now, what where we get that is capacity is at its biggest it's been um, it sounds small but you know 13 14 gallons the next biggest ones are right there you know mm -hmm. they're gonna be here before we know it and it's only gonna grow from there battery technology is what limits it all we can build bigger props bigger arms bases tanks and all that that's not hard to do right how can we get enough battery power to get the this big of a payload off efficiently you know yeah you can build a bigger battery but let's can't make it way too much right this is all aircraft physics that go into it so it's coming it's progressing um but yeah right now we're at the best it's been so yeah yeah it sounds like it um so where uh where do you feel like uh the relationship as far as spraying goes uh is going to be with spray planes going forward yeah that, that's gonna that's a big dynamic and yes and no on that yeah. you know the current um, crop duster applicators right now is kind of black and white we're kind of learning it's mm -hmm. they're diving in and they're buying one and they're like awesome you know yeah every acre that we hate doing because it's a weird shape this drone is doing you know yeah and then you have the totally opposite and they're like you know stay away it's this a very polarizing uh, issue correct. for them yeah yep i suppose in some ways they look at it and say you know this is taking away some of my livelihood or this is this is contrary but i i feel like you know what you're saying right now is that they can be very complimentary and they really should be very complimentary especially those uh those field sizes that are oblong that have um lots of rock piles or sloughs you got to get around things that correct. you don't want yep. to spray and you'd really hate to be spraying into some of these, you know, small sloughs, small lakes. Uh, you, you'd without really like drone to, accuracy. Right, you know? without drone exactly. accuracy. Yeah, so yep. what, that drone accuracy brings me to another question. What height are these drones flying at? Really, to get your full width, um, that's a fully customizable feature as well. Mm -hmm. From above 40 foot canopy trees, you know, to whatever you want to be on a lake or whatever. But... When we're doing row crop acres, if we're getting our full width, we like to be 12 to 15 feet wide. Okay. Yep. Um, that's the most controlled spray pattern um, that we get. And what really plays into the accuracy and the, the coverage is the atomization technology on the spray nozzle. Mm -hmm. Guys look at the drone. They see two nozzles off the backside. They're like, how does this get, you know, 27, 30 feet wide? And with the wind from the, from the props washing down into the crop you're getting lower canopy the coverage is phenomenal mm -hmm. and that just kind of all plays into why a drone works you know how it's worked with chemicals that we thought we never would put through it you know in sure. a wet year like we just had we're putting some herbicides through the drone that you know to be honest they're a little off label right mm -hmm. and and a great kill so yeah it's good to see that so yeah. i want to talk about I think, you know, seeing, before I worked at Ready, I was in uh, radio, and we, uh, walking through, you know, we were in Fargo, North Dakota, so Big Iron, you know, the biggest, you know, one of the biggest farm shows in the area, our area. Um, even the past three years, it feels like these drones have gone from, the size of these drones have increased. Now, 
We talk about the future. You talk about the relationship with the crop duster. Do you think these drones are going to get bigger? Than they are now? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I really do. The FAA, as far as regulation-wise, it's, 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 the, it's the threshold of 55 pounds. So below 55 pounds, you don't need a certain license, and above you do. And that's mm -hmm. all it's at right now. So now when you start getting into way bigger stuff, there's probably plenty more. These clearly exceed 55 pounds, well, well over that. And like I was telling him, as the battery technology progresses, we can get more power out of a smaller power bank battery. It's all about building the bigger tank and making the thing fly faster, yep. Yep. you know, so. So uh, you just talked about two different sets of licenses. That was a, a question that I had for you was, if you are, if you're looking at having some of these drones, uh, you talked about 55 pounds. What are the two different licenses you're talking about? And obviously, for these, you'd have to have a higher license, or the the higher of the two licenses. Just a you're license. Talking, a license. Yeah. So, let's just say below 55 pounds is your camera drone. Okay. We would all need a 107, an individual license. Now we're gonna spray. We need that above 55 pound license, and. What it is, is your, is your company holds that license, your farm would hold that license, it's a 137, and you can add and subtract drone serial numbers to that. It's kind of like a, just an umbrella that covers you for what you end up getting out of it is an end number. Um, so the FAA, it's a tail number, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we got this mm -hmm. big of a machine going on in the, up in the sky, we got to know what's going on. So that's pretty much what it is, and you're supposed to have your drone labeled and identified with that tail number okay. at all times. So that's what, what that license is. So it really doesn't take, does it take training to get that license or is it pretty much an application? It's pretty much, you turn in paperwork okay. and it's a serial number, your 107, your LLC information, and you apply for it. Um, now there's clause in there that you have been properly trained and all that, obviously. And that relies on people like us to train to the guys, train them, you know. Yep. Yep. We get you set up, delivered, we train how to use it. Yeah. And that's on the responsibility of the licensee. So Yeah, I'm sure if you're spending forty grand on a uh, on a drone, you're probably not thinking, Well, my license is I bought it yeah. <laughs> for the most part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sure there are guys like that, uh, that will say I'm gonna buy it and then I'm going to use it because I gosh darn well want to and I spent the money on it. Mm -hmm. But that's uh, exactly maybe right. uh, maybe not the best idea there, especially especially if you were offering to come out and uh, and to train them.